This is the Uptick Network Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Penny stock news and interviews from the microcap world. Public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world. With your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a very exciting guest with us. His name is John Saunders. He is the uh, CEO of Where Food Comes From. They trade on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol WFCF. Where Food Comes From also goes under the name IMI Global. It's America's trusted resource for third-party verification of food production practices. They support more than 10,000 farmers, ranchers, and processors. John, thank you for coming on the show and welcome. Thank you, Everett. You know, give me a little bit of history of yourself and your company, and then I want to get into what I think is a, a great business model, and, and you guys are doing some really fantastic things out there. Well, thank you. Yeah, we, uh, we founded the business over 20 years ago as IMI Global, as you mentioned, and later on uh, we changed the name of the company to Where Food Comes From. And that was a result of understanding that that really is the core mission of our business, and that is to provide uh, transparency to consumers around the world about the food purchases that they're making. As a result of that, we've become the largest uh, verifier of agriculture and uh, production practices in the United States. We currently uh, work with over 10,000 farms and ranches, as you mentioned, and they span all of the primary uh, protein sources, including beef, pork, poultry, and dairy. So through our three divisions, we're able to service customers like Tyson Foods um, with their beef, pork, and poultry verification. Uh, services that they're looking for. We're also a, a large supplier for Whole Foods Market. In fact, this year, uh, just a few months ago, we won their QA Supplier of the Year Award. Um, we're invited to Austin to participate. And then we also work with uh, multinational companies such as uh, McDonald's, and uh, we're helping them develop sustainability standards for their beef producers, specifically in North America. Uh, starting with Canada and then moving to the United States. So we have a really broad footprint across the, uh, the food spectrum, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's exciting for us to be able to promote the positive sides of agriculture uh, through a transparent way to consumers in a way that gives them trust and confidence in the food purchases that they're making. Can you take my listeners through the process of actually how do you guys make your money and maybe elaborate a little bit on this audit bunding? Sure. Well, we're currently uh, verified or certified through 30 different standards. So if, as you list through in your mind the different standards that when you go to the grocery store or to a restaurant and you look for, uh, such as organic, uh, maybe cage-free eggs, uh, grass-fed, um, but also more specific uh, claims that, that just are based on potentially source. So if you're interested in the local movement, uh, purchasing products that are that are uh, sourced from producers within a certain uh, radius of the of the uh, location. That's that's kind of our sweet spot. And we we work with farmers and ranchers of all sizes. Um, we we employ the boots on the ground. So we bring together those 30 years of experience and and standards with uh, a, a group of individuals which have a a broad experience across production agriculture. So one of our requirements is that before any of our verifiers are able to go on site, they have to demonstrate that they're competent in this specific species that's being produced. So a, a beef producer will be audited by a, uh, an individual with experience in the beef industry and so on and so forth. So when we uh, bundle, as you mentioned, for a producer, what we're able to do is, is get a qualified auditor uh, verifier on site, which is able to bundle as many potential audits for that producer as possible uh, to get that audit done in a timely fashion. Because one of our big uh, uh, big barriers to to working with producers is what we call audit fatigue. And if, for example, you're a supplier to a natural grocer around the country, uh, Whole Foods being an example of that, in many cases, as a farmer or rancher. You, uh, you may have to be certified to three or even four different standards. Uh, what we're able to do for producers is to take those four different audits, if you will, and those different uh, standards that they're having to prepare for, which, if, which in a sense is going on all the time for, their, for those producers, 
we're able to bundle that into one uh, relatively painless experience, but to uh, really cut down on the amount of time and a little bit of the cost for the producer. So our competitive advantage as we go to the marketplace is that we're able to certify producers in a in a convenient manner for a very cost competitive price to the to a multitude of standards. And then the producers themselves pay for that for that verification and that audit, which uh, thereby gives them access to markets, uh, which could be uh, domestic markets like a Whole Foods or McDonald's, but also international markets like Japan or the European Union. Can you talk to us a little bit about uh, how you guys have penetrated the international market and, and what's your growth going forward here in the next four to six quarters? Yeah, well, our, our biggest link into uh, to export markets are the high quality uh, meat products that are produced in the, here in the United States, which are very sought after around the world. So what we're doing is we're enabling beef producers and pork producers and poultry producers here in the United States to meet the qualification for export markets. So whether those export markets are, are uh, in the Pacific Rim, like Japan, Korea, and China, um, which have a whole set of, uh, of uh, specifications for these uh, certifications necessary to meet those export markets, we also help producers meet other markets like the EU, which has a different set of specifications. So as we've, uh, as we've been able to grow, with producers here in the United States exporting their products, we've been able to really get a, a reputation and an exposure to international markets, which we think will will continue to uh, strengthen our brand, our uh, Where Food Comes From source verification program, and again, the trust and, and authenticity that comes with ver third-party verification of food production practices. My guest today is John Saunders. He is the uh, CEO of Where Food Comes From. Inc. They're traded on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol WFCF. John, you probably uh, won't brag about it, but I'll brag about it for you. Eight consecutive profitable quarters. I follow out of 9,000 CEOs on the OTC market, I probably follow 4,000. I would put you guys in the top three or 5% as a performance level. I mean, congratulations on that. Can we keep that up? Can, do you see that growing uh, in, in 2016 and 2017? And just give us a little overview of, of the numbers, if you would. Sure. Well, it's, it's a very exciting time for us, partially because, as I mentioned, we've been in business for 20 years. Um, and running a verification business and a certification business has a number of different factors which affect profitability. Um, the, the timing of the year, uh, most of our producers are working uh, through the summer and the fall months, so you have a real strong um, push to, to do a lot of business in those months. Um, but we also have different uh, factors associated with just pure geography. You know, with, with our business, we have to be prepared to uh, conduct audits literally in all 50 states. We do audits in both Alaska and Hawaii. And we're, we're constantly looking at the best way to optimize getting our boots on the ground, those same individuals that were out on, on site to the, to the locations in a, in a timely and efficient manner. Us being profitable for the last two quarters, and more importantly, us having uh, double-digit growth, in fact, it was over 20% since 2009, our, uh, our uh, annual revenue growth that enabled us to, to really optimize how we were able to do that and to stagger our business uh, accordingly around the, the time of the year and also the resources that we were able to have. Um, the profitability that we've seen, uh, it, you know, I found that it's important, it's extremely important that we, uh, our business is not a sprint, our business is a marathon and, and it takes a significant amount of time to uh, become a certification for any standard, let alone 30 of them uh, accredited standards. So. As we do that, it's important that we manage our, our growth, uh, we manage our overhead. Um, we've had a, a, a long streak of being able to continually grow through customers, um, both organically and then through our targeted M&A strategy that's allowed us to acquire five different businesses over the last several years. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it, it hasn't been easy. Um, I think what's most encouraging for us, Everett, is that uh, 
you know, it's it's 20 years in the making this business, yet most people look at us as a startup, which I take as a compliment. And I look at it as, you know, we're really at a, at a blank slate um, as far as, as consumers look at it and an understanding, you know, that it's important to have a better idea of not only the claims that are made about the food that you're purchasing, but the claims about those that we're verifying that those claims are authentic and, and truthful. And that is the space that we that we fit into. So, um, you know, our latest standard that we audit to is the non-GMO project. Uh, just to give you a little sense, in order for us to, to be at the point where last year we began conducting audits, uh, we had roughly three years' worth of back work, which involved uh, becoming accredited to the standard, to training our, our technicians, our people out in the field, uh, developing our proprietary technology around how we train individuals, and then our checklist for actually verifying the production practices. Uh, it's a four-year process. So when you combine that with um, 30 other standards and you look at where we sit competitively, um, it's a very encouraging future. So I, I'll, what, I'll, what I'll be ever is I'll be conservative and say that we, we feel strongly that we can continue to see double-digit growth. Um, I manage to profitability our business, so it's something that's critical for us, again, because we can't, um, in my opinion, build it anticipating that something's going to happen in six months. You know, we have to be ready for it to, uh, to take six years to, to develop, uh, but we've got the staying power. We're, uh, we're totally invested in that. Uh, I do believe, and I'm, I'm a hopeful, uh, hopeful dreamer here, that uh, we, at some point, um, in the future, our brand, where food comes from, will become the de facto standard for what it means to have credibility in food production practices, the same way you would see with a good housekeeping seal of approval or an under, underwriter laboratories. That's our objective. When we accomplish that, and I do believe we will accomplish that, um, then it's a much different, it's a much different scenario from where we look at the financials, uh, the, the growth opportunities, the diversification that we can potentially look at, um, both domestic here in the, in the United States, but also internationally, and to um, to look at again how we continue to promote the positive sides of ag agriculture and farming to consumers that I think are are desperate for that information and really want to have it be something that that they can uh, they can take trust in and they can they can rest their head when they sleep at night. Our guest today is John Saunders. He is the CEO where food comes from. They trade on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol WFCF. In closing, John, is there anything that you'd like to touch upon that we didn't get a chance to talk about uh, in closing here to get out to the listeners? Yeah, I, again, I, I believe that uh, the, the reason that where food comes from is so unique is not whether you believe that organic food is the future or cage-free is right or wrong or um, the use of genetically modified organisms in our food production is, is something that's good or bad. Uh, all of those decisions and all of those choices that you make feeding your family are individual decisions. What's important about those decisions and what's important about where food comes from is that if you believe that in order to, to take credence in those claims on food products, which in many cases is very difficult to discern any of these attributes with the naked eye, what's really important about your decision is that there's a third party that's very verifying those food production practices. Absolutely. And actually going back to the farm and talking to the farms and ranchers. So that that's the critical message, where food comes from is about third-party verification of food production practices. And if that's important to you and what you feed your family, that's, that's, uh, that's the investment thesis that we think um, has, has a very, very broad uh, appeal to a significant number of people, pretty much anybody that eats. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank John Saunders for coming on the show today. Uh, he is the CEO where food comes from. Uh, trades on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol WFCF. John, thank you very much for coming on the show. And we're going to check back with you in a couple of months to see how things are going. All right, Everett. Thanks so much.